Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the lecture about traffic simulation and land use distribution. In this lesson, I introduce you to a model about the relationship between the distribution of land uses and the corresponding generation of traffic. In the model that we use, we will only use two land uses, the distribution of population and workplaces. Basic assumption for the model is that population units travel once a day to workplaces and back. Whereas we use a probabilistic assignment to which workplace a population unit travels because we don't exactly um, how to assign these two units. So we use a kind of a statistical model which gives, uh, gives us some kind of average traffic estimations. But for our purpose in this model, that's absolutely fine. It's about somehow predicting, estimating how much traffic a certain land use pattern will create. By means of our model, we can also vary the density of population and workplace land uses. So we can add units to certain areas, to certain plots in our model. The aim of the whole model is that it gives you a kind of a playground um, for testing your concepts for land use distributions that shall ideally result in less traffic or as less traffic as possible that you can achieve by experimenting with different land use patterns. Um, of course, our model only roughly estimates traffic, but as mentioned, for um, urban planning purposes, where we don't know exactly how things will work in the end, it's a very good tool for um, using the information that we have at the moment. So, therefore, for our model we keep most parameters constant, like the geometry of the street network and many other things that you cannot manipulate in this lesson. Um, because we want to concentrate on the land use distribution only and the corresponding effect on the traffic. Later in your urban planning project, you may vary many more aspects of this model or of your plan, of your master plan. This model is nothing else than one part of a master plan. But for a better understanding of the basic mechanism, how traffic is caused, we concentrate in this model on land use distribution only. So we use the two land uses in order to focus on these relationships between the land uses and the generation of traffic. Of course, this model, the two land uses, they can be extended into um, more urban functions, more land uses like commercial activities, or service, land use, or industry, agriculture, and so on. Um, in, this, in the last lesson, you already learned how the um, calculation of trips by our network analysis model works. So you know how we calculate the paths between origins and destinations. And this is now used as paths between population units and workplace units. And in the end, we interpret the path that's found in the network as the trip. So as the path um, somebody uses by car or whatsoever, that's abstracted. So um, we are not interested in the mode of transport. We are just interested in which routes are more often used and summing these routes up in the total traffic that your pattern is caused. Um, the Grasshopper model allows us to draw the land uses on the map and get a direct feedback how much traffic um, your land use pattern generates. So this will be very useful. Um, because you also get statistics that tells you the number of trips or the average trip length that, um, is, that, that your land use pattern is causing. 
and you can try to minimize this number. Um, after the lesson, you will, uh, you will be asked to draw a land use pattern by distributing 1000 population and 1000 workplace unit in this abstract circular model that I will show you now. Um, and what you should do is um, you should finally find a pattern um, by which you achieve a better result than our so-called null model, which is um, an equal distribution of land uses um, in the model. So the same ratio of population units and workplace units are distributed in each parcel. So that's obviously the simplest idea for a distribution, putting everywhere the same amount of something. And what you shall do is to become better with your model. Means the land use pattern you create shall result in less traffic. So now that's, I think, enough as an introduction. Now let's jump into the Grasshopper model and have a look at how this model really works.